什么野啊？什么野啊？马上新写了呀！新写了呀！没事了，没事了。
Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? No, this is... No, this is... Uh, above is uh, actually, above a is actually 80. a Glacier 80. Yeah, I'm still working yeah, on, adjusting, still working all on adjusting all these settings to get it, you know, get it, work, you nicely. know work nicely. First stream, so First you know, gotta work so out the kinks. You know, gotta work out the kinks. All right, all right. First, I'm just trying to get First, this going. To get so I don't blind my eyeballs. I'm trying to turn off the RGB. Turn off the RGB. Does it work? Does it work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'll just go with it How you doing, man? How you doing, man? There's an echo from, an your, echo audio. from your audio. Is there still an echo? Is there still an echo? It's better. It's better. I didn't do anything I yet. I didn't do anything yet, though. If I do this, if I do this, can you still hear me? Or did it get worse? Or did it get worse? Still hear the echo. I have echo. one thing one capturing, thing audio. capturing audio. audio. It's still bad. It's still bad. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, how about now? Yeah, I'm using OBS. I'm trying to figure out how to use OBS properly. I think I got it. I had multiple audio devices on, and it was not showing me everything. Hey, sweet. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right, let's stop blinding my eyeballs now. This this should hopefully be a relatively quick build. Um, so you know the perks of hot swap. Alright. So we got D eighty four in red and we got a PC plate. I'm trying to think, do we want foam or no foam? Foam will technically make this stockier, which is what the client wants. So it is hot swap, so let's try with no foam first. Put this all aside. And then we will work on the stabilizers. Foam for sure. We'll see. Face foam maybe. Um, but if you add too much foam, especially thick foam. It'll start to cut out all the good, uh, deeper, low-end sounds. Oh, 
Fuck best? Uh, yes and no. I don't know. After a while, it seems like everyone kind of gravitates to something in the middle. Uh, these are C3 version 3s from C3 equals. No, of course not stock. We're going to be looping them up. So we'll be using 205 and BDZ. Kind of a madman uses stock stabs. Oh, you got no idea how to put them on your key? Yeah. When I put these on, I'll let you know how to uh, get stabs installed. So don't worry. Have you got them lubed up yet? Nope. Do you like? Do you have the stuff to lube them, or are you just gonna kind of throw them in stock? Still in the box. Now, are you planning to lube them is the question. Almost done lubing my switches, nice. So what's your build? with or without the knob. And then what are you planning on putting on your Q1? Ooh, a pack of V2s. GMK Godspeed. Wow. And drop V2s. That's some solid. Keycaps on the way. When did you order them? Drops sometimes, sometimes they're quick, sometimes they're slow. It's, it's like, it's just up in the air. Randy, how you doing? What you doing? Oh, shipped 30 minutes ago. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so I need to this backwards. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three, four. This should be 6.25. I would expect them to come within a week then, if they just shipped. Acrylic basket weave. Ooh. Yeah, you still haven't done your uh, your discipline, have you? Wait, where does uh, drop ship from? Your 
left ear is having fun? I don't know. Is my audio only one direction right now? Really? You know, I didn't say anything about that. Randy, can you confirm if my audio is only going through one ear? One, two, three, four. If it is, I'll look, I think it is, I'm using speakers. Hmm, okay, let's see. Keep talking, blah, 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 blah. Um, sound settings, device properties. I should be should be on split channels. If not, I guess I'll just swap back to my old mic. I don't think there's a difference in audio quality in my recordings on the new one anyways. All left side audio for me. It might be that this microphone is one channel only. It's supposed to be a measurement microphone, technically. So, there should be a way to go. Make sure your mic is set to one channel. I'm gonna have two channels. There's something I can do on OBS side. Nope. Uh, about now. I think I found something for making a mono so I think that should be good now right yes now maybe Yes, ah, oh, sweet. In stereo now, sweet, yeah. So 
So are you gonna build your basket weave or are you gonna let it kind of, you know, sit there? stuff done. I wanted to try mill maxing it. I had a bad time with that. It caused the plate to no to not clipping properly. The really the plate? Why would it end up having problems with the plate? That seems strange. Oh yeah, we're using Texi sapphires on this one. So it's a little bit softer than blue velvets is my experience with it right now uh, so far. I have to see once I actually put it in the board. Um, they're very smooth. They have that nice, you know, ruby or sapphire sound to them. So yeah, it'd be pretty, pretty cool to see how they act. V2. I think the V1s are being sold out on Dan Keems at least. So, I mean, no one should really be picking up any V2s or V1s. I mean, I should technically make the plate slide down every time you plug it in a switch. Uh, balancing their stabs. I mean, they're not, it's not like super duper necessary depending on what kind of stabs you buy. Um, and you know how they get delivered. Uh, I trust that these are going to be, you know, basically if near or near perfect, uh, in terms of balance, uh, if you're a little meticulous about it, you can, you know, try to put them on a flat surface and use some pliers or whatever to straighten them out. Uh, I've not had any problems with these ones and you know, I'm not wholly modding or anything where I'm making the tolerances super tight. I'm just using, you know, good lube and a good amount of it and that's really all you need you know I, there are some cases where you know if you buy maybe like Durox or something and they come in like loose packaging that they can get kind of bent out of shape or if you're using like stock stabs you know that's a whole different story And last one. Keychron stocks. I already thought um, the Keychron stock subs were fairly decent, like on the Q1s. 
Was that I was heard? I don't remember if I used stock stabs or not on my Q1 build. I don't think so. Q-Con stock stabs are going to K10 and were nearly, really? Like they were pre-lubed and everything? I thought the K series were like, you know, bare bones as much as you can possibly get. All right, so let's see if these are good. The worst part about lubing is you just get lube all over your hands and everything. All right, so uh, PQ, how you put in stabs is basically when you look for your stab holes, you have the larger set and then you have a smaller one, you know, there's identical. And the clips on your stabs go in the larger one. So the ones that kind of angle down, not the screwing part. So you kind of angle them in, and then just get it to press down. That's really it. Pre-built cave actually. Yeah, they just like the way they put it in. They put it in the most random spot. It seems like, or they just put it like on this outer side part, that it really doesn't do anything. Uh, where's my screwdriver? Okay, let's see. Where's my screws? There we go. Um, I got lucky on my first KBD 67 light and those stock stabs were like perfect. Like I did not really need to do much except for like maybe a slight touch up. Um, but I've had, you know, some other ones like the GKs, you know, they just come all greased up and they're terrible. I wonder if they have a machine that does it, or if they just have, you know, hire a guy and give him a tube and just tell him, to, you know, put it right there. Nice and sturdy. And I'm using the washers because I don't think I need the washers for this one. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will put in the stab shim pad things. Exact same screwdriver. Yeah. That's a good set. It works very well. Let's put these on to reduce any rattle. So these are just tiny little strips of foam that I like to put under the spacebar wires or the stabilizer wires.
Uh, what do you mean by foam? The little strips of foam? If you're talking about like, these ones that you would put uh, under your wires, I definitely do it. Because um, you can lube up your switches or not switches, your stabs pretty well. But that little bit of play you can get in, in these little uh, clips is where that little bit of ticking will happen, where you kind of tap on it very lightly. It just comes from that, you know, that little bit kind of going up and down. Yeah, I think it'd be worth getting it. Uh, another thing you can do is just doing a decent amount of lube on the clips themselves, which I also add as well. Um, so you can do both, or at least, at the very least, just do that if you don't want to get those little strips. So these foam strips come with uh, the C3s. Come in these like little packets. If it's not you know blown out because my bright's really light, um, and I just kind of been harvesting that. It's the only thing I use from all the accessories they provide you. As f I think they sell these little packs separately. So if you want everything, it's like it, inside these little packs they come with like you know stab pads that you would put under the stabilizers for like you know wobble then they have like band-aid mod things essentially um, they have holy mod stuff in them uh, with like little teflon that you can slip into your your durox or any other stabs but at the end of the day after like messing with all that stuff i just found that just using c3s and bdz and these like little foam pads has been like the best for my use case at least oh they came with them really I don't remember seeing that. Let me get this out of the way. It's taking space. I think if you buy like, you know, one millimeter thick foam or you have anything that's one millimeter thick, they can be a good substitute. Uh, the main thing is just be careful not to put too much or make it too thick or else you'll start uh, introducing like kind of like resistance to your stabs as they could try to turn. Hey, what's up, Alex? <laughs> what an introduction. What's up, man? Glad you could tune in. I noticed there's a distinct lack of uploads on your channel. Why is that? Stabs are in. Where's my plate? Call me out. Hey, I'm just trying to encourage you to get back on the grind. I heard this. Sorry to hear that, man. Well, let's go ahead and put the, the foam in. Live shows. So, are you mainly a producer or a performer?
Do you do that as freelance mainly, or I think I asked like, were you, were you part of an orchestra, or some kind of ensemble? GK Red Samurai. Freelance. So where do you like post all your your advertisements? Plastic wrap. Okay. Oh, I was asking, where do you post uh, your advertisements? Your freelancing. You don't. This is about word of mouth. Oh, really? Well, you had to start somewhere. They were just like, oh, let me just, you know, go to my friend's house and start playing. Okay. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it was that simple, huh? Let me wash the lube off my hands, and then I'm going to bring out the artisans. Disconnect the camera one second. There we go, we back. I kind of knocked over the tripod a little bit. Yeah, I lubed them a couple days ago, or else we'd be sitting here for another like an hour or two. Just watching me lube. That's not gonna be super entertaining. There we go, baby. I do want to let you know, I did see some Red Dragon uh, GMK sets on the aftermarket. I don't know if you wanted to get that or not, uh, or if they're already gone or not, but since you already had a set, I was, I was wasn't going to tell you, but hey, you can buy this set too, since you already have Red Samurai, so you know. Maybe for the future.
Sounds like, yeah. I'll go ahead and look for it after. And see if you can try to snag that. All right. Mic. Let's get the mic on nice and low. Solid. Okay. So just on this one is a little bit of tick. So let's go ahead and close up. Get a little handy dandy syringe. Tiny bit more lube in there. Oh, what could help is if I add a little bit of grease to all these clips themselves. Uh, can I restart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Let me just take it all apart. I got you. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Might need to foam the space bar. It's a little hollow, but we'll see how it turns out. The sucky part is about whenever you're taking in and out keycaps, so it just kind of ruins your stabs a little bit. these in. Right, definitely next time when you find some royalty free like jazz music or some, something nice and chill. Figure out how to get that going as well. Ooh, are these leaf spring? Ooh, spicy. So I had the D65, so kind of like the smaller version of this, and I don't, I don't know if that one has a version too. Like this one has a version too. This is the D84. The D85 or 65 was really firm. Like it was called gasket mount, but by the time you screwed everything together, it was basically like, like a sandwich. You know, like there was no flex, no like any kind of dampening, it was just hard. It was still a pretty good board though. Maybe it had like a tiny little bit of dampening, but it's pretty interesting to see that this has like some flex cuts in it. Uh, you know, K 
KBD fans has been doing a lot of work trying to update what they got, especially what they did with the KBD 75. The version 3 is pretty good. How they turned it into a proper top mount instead of tray mount. So, if you're in the market for a 75%, KBD 75 is pretty good, I would say. Imagine artisan ISO enters that big enter that those you know Europeans use, and an artisan for that would be so wild. You could do anything without so much space. Ukraine switches? I'm not following. What do you mean by that? I thought Ukraine probably had a little bit of red in it. I thought it was like so much of Russian colors, but like a different uh, styling or something. I don't really know, to be honest. You're right, and I don't look at it yet. Yeah. Wait, they have a trident? Why is there a thing a trident? What's the significance of that? I mean, they are pretty close to the C, I think. Are they near Atlantis? Is that why? Russia wants it, they want to discover Atlantis.
Oh, I think that sucks. There's no step caps lock. I use a regular one. I think step cap slop is coming my new favorite, even though it feels kind of weird. Step caps lock unusable. Excuse me, mister. You have not experienced the luxury that is step caps lock. Who was the brand that made like a step caps lock but worked with like non stepped uh, layout? Oh, so step caps lock is basically with the caps lock that has like a little bit of an indent in it. I don't know what the whole significance behind it is. But it's, it's neat, it's interesting, it's different. The main issue is uh, the switch position itself needs to be a little bit over. That's why you see a little bit of gap here on the plate. That's why you can kind of like slot it over a little bit more. It's just a little thing for fun. It's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, actually, there's nothing really that compares to it. That's the only weird thing you can really go for. Unless you want to go like super wild and get that big ass enter. Boom. 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 Last one, baby. extra key switches I wouldn't say it's more of a premium thing it's just like it's there on boards that are more expensive because their PCBs tend to be a little more fancy like they're like oh let me add an extra soldering hole or an extra hot swap socket just for it so actually I guess it is premium I don't know I was looking at the QK. I'm gonna pick it up for a friend. Not sure yet. Cause he's an accountant, so he kinda needs the pad. So But he's at home though, so I don't really know. Yeah, standalone numpads. Is the QK having a standalone numpad? Like, is QWERTY keys making one? The thing about standalone numpads, though, it's like you have to have a match, or else, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice. Freebird actually would have been a good idea. Because they had matching uh, numpad with our TKO. There's a lack of southpaw boards where the numpad's on the left side. I need to bring more of that back.
What you eating? What do you mean? What am I eating? I'm not eating anything. No, I'm kidding. I'm eating some some buns on the side. Kind of skipped out on lunch. We didn't finish making lunch until around like an hour ago, when I was already starting the stream. So I was kind of like, eh. Alluringly elusive. What a name. Question one for Alex. Do we want the dark ones here or do we want the regular non-dark ones? So typically it's not, but for balance, do we want them? Probably dark? Yeah. Next question for Alex. So, for your home row F and J's, there are kind of like curved scooped ones, or there is a typical one with a little nub on the bottom. What you thinking? We can change them out yourself later, but. This one kind of like cradles your hand and doesn't have like a little nub on it. And this one has a little, little indent. Probably typical with a nub. Okay. You got it. PSDF. You know, when you do this a lot, you kind of get really good at knowing where the letters are, but you still can't type for shit. You think that, oh, I know where the letters are if I put these keycaps on, and then we actually start trying to make out words. Brain just kind of freezes up. You don't know what to do. What's my typing speed? Uh, if I am... I've only done like 30 second ones in bursts. The best I've done is, on average, I would say around 95 to 100, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm getting up there. I think my max I've ever done was like a 110. What's your typing speed, mister? Going, that's good. How do I know, you know? <laughs> uh, it might be. Dang, one twenty. Jeez. Are you able to keep that up, or is that kind of like a burst thing? Yes, it's exactly what it is, Randy. All right. So Wow, instead of like Windows or Super, they call it Meta. Okay then. Actually, huh? They didn't come with any colored arrow keys. 
That's kind of a bummer. Where is that? Oh, it's in the set. Actually, a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you buy any other set, they actually have like all these extra pieces for like, you know, if you want things in various spots. There's not even a, it's not even a page down. The heck? Or, they're, or they're, there's a page down, but they're both the same profile. How is that supposed to work? I mean, we can make it work, but it's just... Interesting. Uh, it looks vibrant on camera. In person, it's a lot more maroon. Let's see. They don't have like the one U versions for for these. Do they really not come with them? Let me see. Google. Wait, there's two listings for this? I'm so confused. So the listing that we purchased is this one. And there's another one with ex the extra keys that we're looking for. Why would you not put them all into one option? Why would they do that? They could have put it all on one page. And just have all those options there. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do the same for dev and TTYs. Okay. What is. 
So they can sell your same set twice. Yeah, seems like it. Uh, what's drops return policy? So we're gonna get our right set. Because they kind of gypped us here. But the, the amazing thing is, is you can buy the base kit that has all the extras we need, right? But the base kit doesn't have the Japanese sub legends. You have to get that separately for 90 bucks. It's automated. So I just put it back in the box and kind of send it back or something. Go to your orders and submit a return. Okay. They charge for returns? Let's see. So let me link you the site and I'll tell two keyboards here. So we can, so their base set doesn't have, for me it's like kind of like Amazon, not they pay, sh what? So do we pay shipping or they pay shipping? Or does it, neither, I guess. So their base set is 150, which was $40 more than the set that we got but it doesn't have the Japanese sub legends if you're into that. And that one would be an extra 90, which is kind of BS. Why don't they just make a full base kit with the Japanese sub legends? They already do that for their, the other set. I do have this set handy. It's like a bright red. I wonder if that matches the case or not. And does this have everything we need? It does. Wow. Not too red? Alright, I gotcha. shall the plan be mister cheaper and faster just to buy the same set again uh probably we're not the same but like the what do you mean cheaper and faster just to buy the same set again So what we're missing is single unit sizes of control, FN, and alt for this. And then they also, we have like different profiles for these over here. These are all like, you know, top row, like you would see on a regular full size keyboard or something, which is what their set is geared towards on the one that we purchased versus the one that they, you know, threw in a different page.
So the bare minimum basically to make it fit for this is we need to return this set. Okay. Or, or we, let me see if I can find Red Dragon on Aftermarket. And then I can do that instead. Because then you're going to end up being ending up with, you know, extra keycaps you're not going to use. So. Red dragon. Huh. Everyone has the artisans, no one's having the keycap sets. Oh, fun desk mask, though. Yeah, it is. Keycaps, keycaps. Well, the original Red Dragon set is like super dark. It's like, it's like black with red legends. I don't know if I actually want that though. Those are sick. Uh, let's see if we can find how they look on a red board. Everything I'm seeing is on black. Um, on white, interesting. Oh, 
Popeyes and Cravers don't Popeyes as much as they do in the photo. Yeah, that's it's possible. Cause though that picture definitely looks like it has its saturation cranked. Let's I I'm not able to find any like non renders. Let's see if we find something that's not rendered. Everything I'm seeing is like on. Hey Randy, did Red Dragon drop yet or is it still in production? January 2022, I've gone through two rounds of color samples and I've gone ahead and requested a third sample. S set has been delayed to Q4 of 2021. Okay, so technically it's not even out yet. It's available on Amazon. Red Dragon? No, 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 Red Dragon, not Red Samurai. I mean, there's clones of Red Samurai or Red Dragon. Can always count on clones. If these are to be believed, it's actually pretty pretty vibrant that red. I still don't know how it will look on our board though. I can go ahead and just finish the build and then we'll kind of just leave it at that and then we'll kind of you know search for the proper keycap set get that sorted and then it should be a done deal yeah wow their packaging leaves so much little pieces of lint everywhere I love those paper trays. They're eco friendly. Woo. Yeah. Yangchu makes really good clones. Like they're they're cheap, but like they're good. I think I've picked up a good like 10 sets before for various people and for myself. No complaints.
right. Let's get these gaskets on. Oh, these are some thick gaskets. It's like what they used on the D65, I think. Where's the face cam? <gasps> Rizzo! No face cam. I only have one camera, dude. Who do you think you're talking to? They ain't got money for two cameras like you? Pressure of hair? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you get, you gotta, you gotta pay extra. You gotta be a members only. And then if you uh, join the OnlyFans, you get feed pics. Where are these real juices? Okay. These cutouts are a little small. So let me just trim these. I think it's OnlyFans and you have a two camera setup. Are you right? I wonder where everyone here got started with Hey-Ho.
bottom case done, top case, wildcat. I'm trying to remember. I I for sure knew I watched that uh, the Tifu build one, but I don't think that was my first video that got me into it. Oh yeah, random Frank P getting. I wonder if he's still in it. He kind of like stopped making content for a little while. I'm not sure. Oh, that's for sure. You never know. I have three clients that are repeats. Uh, I think they're kind of like, you know, super addicted now at this point. One, I think I've made six boards for already. 
And another one is three. They're trying to be three, but they're like very expensive ones. These casket tabs are a little hard to get in. I just do my best. Okay, those are in. I can if you really want me to. No max, where would you want to no max that? Just get rid of it, what do you mean? I think these gasket tabs are made for the D65 and they're just kind of reusing them essentially. And then so they don't exactly fit on this one. I guess it's trying to be eco friendly or something. I mean, it's not too surprising. Some other uh, companies do the same thing. Especially for ones that make like, you know, a lot of in stock ones. I should just put it on the plate to be honest. I don't know why I'm doing all this extra work. I'm trying to squeeze them in this. Uh yeah, basically. It's, it's not eco as an ecosystem, it's eco as an economically friendly.
Okay, yeah, let's slot this on. With foam under the PCB, do any fried gas come out? It can. Uh, in general, you want to like maybe foam under it to just get rid of hollowness. Uh, if there is any, depending on how much space is designed between the PCB and the rest of the case. Um, but it can also, if you put too much foam, you're basically kind of like reducing the whole point of a ga uh, gas come out because then there's no like uh, space for it to go up and down. And especially on this one, since we want the underglow, we don't want to cover it all up. Uh, I looked at the way they cut the acrylic and they have like a good wedge in it. So where it kind of follows up the angling of the board itself. So I don't expect any kind of hollowness issues. Mostly we just get, you know, the natural reverb of acrylic. What if there is, there's little bits of foam that we can't do. Missing a screw. Well, that's actually really nice looking. Ooh, this can kind of shift it up a little bit. Is that rubbing? It is a little bit. It's kind of sagging a little downwards. Okay, let me loosen it up a little bit and then kind of reposition it. I can't tell you already that it's very talky sounding, so that's a good sign. This point, which is where you loosen up the whole thing.
does it keep on leaning down a little bit? It's kind of annoying. Why won't you stay in place, mister? Uh, the other side does. Screw on the floor alert? Yeah, I'll get it in a second. I wonder if I should add a little bit of Teflon tape around the edges to kind of make sure it's centered. I put it on upside down. Oh, I think it's a USB port pushing it in. There we go. So if I do that first. And then this sting on USB port. There it is. All right, that's what it was. Chuck. Oh yeah, nice and straight. Maybe that you don't have carpet. Yeah, but then sometimes when your feet gets cold, because you know, you have wood instead. It's actually a good amount of flex in this. Holy moly. Wow, KVD fans really did something. Like, I think I'm like actually hitting the bottom of the, the base, which won't really happen if you're typing a you know, real 
That's cool. But if you had the aluminum one, I would be afraid of it, you know, shorting. But yeah, that's a lot of flex. Like, like my, like the glacier is made for flex, and it's about the same. Maybe even a little bit more. Yo. D84? Might be pretty good. Like it's... Tactiles are on it. Or don't feel any harsh. It's nice and comfortable. And typically when you have a lot of flex... Your board is a little more high pitched from my experience. Well, this worked out great. This is solid. Let's call it mon oh, wait, there's no point in playing a monkey tech if I can't plug it in. Oh, let's get the lighting going too. Um, so the whole assembly does shift around a little bit, so when you plug in your, your USB port, it kind of pushes it. But you can just kind of center it back, it should be good. Oh, that's a flashbang. Ow. Ow. Uh, where's that from? Oh, there's the solid colors. Oh, that's like lava. That's actually really cool. Like, if you're kind of leaning back at it, I don't know if I can kind of replicate for you guys. There you go. I'm a little worried about all the flex and this USB port, though. Yeah. If you have access to, like, a machine shop, and you want to keep the flex, I would kind of like drill this out a little bit more. Because the USB port's like right snug in there. So it's kind of limiting it in a way. Nothing that I don't think you would experience too much during regular use. Really. Um, but something just to consider. Alright, monkey tight. Tactiles. I haven't used tactiles in so long, it's throwing me off. Oh, the void pressing too, yeah. So maybe when you're gaming a little hard, you don't want to kind of like, you know, hold it down too hard. But I mean, like, during normal use, it's not that, it should be fine. Yeah, like on this side is, is nuts. On this side, not so much. I mean, like, you can do it. It's fine. But I wouldn't like, oh, I wouldn't be like, hey, friends, look at this flex. And like kind of like really push hard. Because when you're doing these flex tests, like you're actually like, like you're pushing it. Right? But like realistically, when you're playing games, like you're just holding it down. That's, that's not much force. I mean, if you really want, I have a file. I could try to go to town on this, but that might scratch it up looking, so, yeah. Ooh, 
the main thing is like the flex is more of an indication of how soft it really is, how much like give it has to cushion out what you're typing. Yeah, this is nice. It's comfy, it's good, it's solid, it sounds great. Fuck these tactiles, man. You're getting to me. I've been using linears for so long. I've been thinking about going back to tactiles just for one or two boards. These uh these sapphires are really nice. They're not too tactile, and they're good sound. All you gotta do is just figure out this uh, keycap situation. All right, I think that will just about wrap it up. Uh, how many boards do I have? Personally, right now I only have technically three. The one is unbuilt and I'm trying to sell it. Um, the two that are actively being used is this glacier here. And then I have over here this magnet 65. How many do I have coming in? That's a different question. But I'll probably sell most of those two. I don't really see myself like having too many at once. Yeah. I like to use that one as my travel one. The suit beater? Nah. It was uh, it was chat. It's always chat. Yeah, it really does. I mean, and for me, I'm not at the point where it's like I can collect um you know i only recently started working and most of these boards that i have now were like stuff that i started off with something relatively cheap and i made a little more money then i sold that off uh, you know to make a little money off of that and then you know add an extra hundred dollars and then like on and on and on um so like this glacier even though i picked up recently um it looks pretty good i like like you know the the mirror weight on the back so let's see if I can do this without right. I still have the tape on it because um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it so I'll peel that off another day uh, but then you know I was like uh, it looks good the flex is really nice and why not but it's a little too bouncy for my preference uh, it distracts me so I went back to look for something a little more firmer. Um, and for me, I think I want a TKL that's not this thin on the sides. Get this to focus. Yeah, because it's a little too thin on the sides for my tastes. So I picked up an Iron 180, which is, you know, a lot more thicker bezeled. Kind of similar to like this, but a little more like squared corners, a little more thicker. As I think that looks a lot better in my opinion. And then I'm selling this glacier off to another friend of mine who I just made a Mode 65 for, like literally a couple days ago. And he's like, oh, I want, you know, a TK on now. And then and then, then we have like another board in group buy right now. And then he wants like a 7V, which is like $1,000 on the aftermarket right now, $900, $800. So yeah, he's got a problem. I've been trying to like, you know, hey, you know, money is important don't like going to debt for boards but he's a software engineer so that's why he has money for that and the need for it i guess okay i'm going to put these keycaps back in the box no the get heat a little bit i would say a little bit oh my camera die oh it might have my camera did die indeed. Get a new battery. Uh, what was I 
saying? Yeah, man. I appreciate that you can come by. Uh, we'll get this keycap thing sorted and solved. Where's my keycap holder? Where did it go? Mm, I love all the single-use plastic. Is it like hiding from me? I literally had it a second ago. Clean while watching. Yeah. You thought. And then you get a little immersed. Okay. I'll find it eventually after this. All right. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, first stream. So I was a little scuffed. But, you know, more to come. And, yeah. I'll catch you all later.